much for joining us. Just time for a quick recap of the week. And we begin with the Trump administration, which is truly like a circus in that nothing about it is funny and I badly want it to end. <laughs> uh, this week, even by current White House standards, was a mess. Such a mess that we don't even have time to get into Mueller's investigation heating up or Trump flip-flopping on gun reform or the president's ongoing spat with his attorney general, except to mention this amazing detail. The Washington Post reported the president has referred to Sessions as the short-sighted elderly cartoon character, Mr. Magoo. Okay, so first, leave it to Trump to mock Sessions as a doddering old man, even though Trump is, and this is true, six months older than him. <laughs> and look, calling him Mr. Magoo isn't just mean, it's lazy. If you want to hurt Sessions, try. Use your imagination. Call him Confederate Smurf. Or a casting director's second choice for an incontinence ad. Or the result of a one-night stand between Strom Thurmond and a golden raisin. At least make an effort. Meanwhile, the administration continues to hemorrhage staffers, the latest being Hope Hicks, White House communications director and girl who started that mean rumour about you in high school. And Hicks leaving is actually a big deal for Trump. With her gone, this leaves a stunning lack of confidence in the president's inner circle. Dan Scavino, the social media director here, President Trump's former golf caddy, is the last man standing from the original team of his campaign. Okay. So, let's all admit, that is a suspicious photo. But, to be fair, we looked for non-suspicious photos of Dan Scavino, and we couldn't find any. There's this one where he's looking at porn at work, suspicious. There's this one where he's, you didn't see anything, and if you say a word, I'll break your fucking neck, suspicious. And there's my absolute favourite, the, oh no, I just realised I left my Craigslist friend in the punishment box, suspicious. He's a suspicious looking guy, that's all I'm saying. Now, clearly not everyone has left. There is, of course, still Jared Kushner, America's busiest business boy. <laughs> although, although Jared may actually have had the worst week of all, starting with this. President Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor Jared Kushner no longer has access to top secret material. Kushner's clearance level was downgraded from top secret to secret. Even the White House calligrapher now has a higher level of clearance than Kushner now does. Wow. That is humiliating, although it does kind of make sense that a calligrapher has to be good at keeping secrets. For example, they have to keep the secret that there is a font in Microsoft Word that does their entire fucking job. But what's crazy is Kushner has reportedly been on interim security clearance ever since he joined the White House, and that is for pretty good reasons. Jared Kushner... It's not just has a complicated business. He had to change his federal disclosure forms multiple times because he, quote, inadvertently omitted millions of dollars in assets and forgot to include more than 100 foreign contacts. So in other words, Kushner screwed up some important paperwork, keeps changing his personal wealth and casually overlooked hundreds of foreigners. He truly is his father-in-law's son. <laughs> The only real difference is one of them has electrifying sexual chemistry with Ivanka Trump, and the other is Jared Kushner. <laughs> now, now Jared's, Jared's security issue may affect his ability to take an active role in international relations, although going by another story that came out this week, that may not be the worst thing. A report in the Washington Post suggests officials from China, Israel, Mexico, and the United Arab Emirates saw Kushner as exploitable and at one point hoped to manipulate him. Now, the most shocking thing about that is if somehow only four foreign governments thought they could manipulate him. How is it not more than that? What nation looked at this man and thought, forget it, his mind is a fortress? How did Bolivia, Laos or Germany not feel that this was a crackable nut? Come on, France, Iceland, you didn't think it, it was even worth trying a little nudge-nudge on the old Kush ball? Donald Trump Jr., named Man of the Year by Daddy Issues magazine, 40 years running. So, what brought America's greatest living Donald Trump to India? Was it a profound sense of wanderlust, or, or did, perhaps, a trash pile of shitty condos need unloading? I, I won't keep you in suspense. Don Jr. arriving today using the Trump brand to sell new luxury apartments. Newspaper ads in the country touting, Trump has arrived, have you? Okay, so first, Trump has arrived is unquestionably what Don Jr. says when he orgasms. <laughs> he, uh, he's, he saves the have you for special occasions. And also, 
That is a pretty misleading ad, because when you say Trump has arrived, people naturally assume you mean the President of the United States, not Don Jr. It's like if Ed Sullivan went, ladies and gentlemen, the Beatles, and then the studio was just overrun with Beatles. <laughs> that's not what people signed up for. And look, if you think that's harsh, even those present were a tad disappointed, with one real estate developer telling the Washington Post, ideally, we'd have preferred Ivanka. <laughs> Which, yes, is understandable, but you're coming off a little ungrateful there, India. Just be thankful you didn't get Eric, OK? <laughs> it could have been worse. Now, Tom Jr.'s trip started off a little bumpy as well. He sat down with CNBC India for a softball interview in which he somehow managed to give the only wrong answer to the question, can you say one thing you like about India? I think there is something about the spirit of the Indian people that's unique here to other parts of the emerging world. I can, you know, you, you go through a town and you, you know, and I don't mean to be glib about it, but you can see the poorest of the poor. Mm. And there's a, there's still a smile on a face. You say hello, you, it, it, it's a different spirit that you don't see in other parts of the world. Okay, so look. Condescending tone aside, I will just point out that even if the poorest of the poor were smiling at Don Jr., there's no way that they weren't also thinking, we would have preferred Ivanka. <laughs> but, but the actual substantial problem with this trip was the ethical questions that it posed, in part because those who bought into those condos got offered conversation and dinner with Don Jr., which is fine for a private citizen, but it becomes problematic if he's perceived as representing the government. And while he insisted that he was just a private businessman doing private business things, one speech was originally titled Reshaping Indo-Pacific Ties, the New Era of Cooperation, which sure as shit sounds like foreign policy, and they must have realised that it was a problem because the title was later changed to Fireside's Chat with Donald Trump Jr., <laughs> Executive Vice President, the Trump Organisation. Presumably, in between, it was billed as Big Boy Business with I'm Donald Trump too. <laughs> Still... I, I will say this in Donald Jr.'s defence. It may be difficult for him to sell access to his father's inner circle because, as he revealed during that fireside chat, he doesn't seem to be anywhere near it. What are conversations at home like? Well, you know, again, I think these days I see him so little that we don't actually <laughs> talk politics. Now, when I think, hey, why don't I call him just to say hi, I think about the stuff that he's dealing with on a daily basis. When something goes on, you know, in a country far, far away, and I'm, man, I, I don't even want to bother him. I feel it's almost trite to call him and just to say hello. Does that make any sense? It, it, it probably doesn't. No, you're right. It doesn't. At all. Because calling your dad just to say hello could never seem trite, because that's just not what the word trite means. <laughs> in any shape or form. But I will say this. He can call his dad or not call him. It doesn't really make a difference. Because after this week, if you've learned one thing about Donald Trump, it's that you could be sitting right in front of him and he could even tell you that he hears you, but that does not mean he's listening to a fucking word you're saying. <laughs> they know what they did! Naughty Germany! Now, now, globally, it seems that China is set to be the biggest beneficiary because they have been aggressively seeking to increase their influence and soft power, something that has not gone unnoticed. An Asian head of government recently explained to me that at every regional conference, Washington sends a couple of diplomats, whereas Beijing sends dozens. The Chinese are there at every committee meeting, and you are not, he said. The result, he explained, is that Beijing is increasingly setting the Asian agenda. It's true. The U.S. is absent at many important meetings, and that doesn't even include meetings that Jared Kushner was supposed to attend, but he couldn't find a room, and he was too shy to ask someone, and then he realised it was too late anyway, so he just killed an hour wandering around the lobby pretending to be on the phone. <laughs> and, and the thing is... China's increased influence should be alarming because they are an autocratic country. You don't necessarily want China setting global priorities on things like human rights and democracy. And yet, Trump's reckless behaviour is opening the door to exactly that happening. Not to mention the fact that what he's doing is going to make it harder for him to accomplish his own goals. He wants to contain North Korea? Well, to do that, you might want to appoint an ambassador to South Korea. He wants Germany to spend more on its military? OK, but maybe stop publicly shaming Merkel if you want her to be able to sell that idea back home. And if he wants to contain security threats like ISIS and Al-Shabaab in African countries, then maybe don't call African countries fucking shitholes. And, and that is the thing here. 